Hi there, I'm Mary Susie from Bead Me a Story and thanks so much for watching my video today. This is the Shaggy Megatama necklace. I have a stretchy Shaggy Megatama bracelet and there is a video for that that you can watch and it's probably one of our most popular kits that we've ever done. I've been putting out Shaggy Megatama stretch bracelets for years and um, after I did them for a couple seasons and realized that it was a it was a jewelry item that people loved making and it was never going to go away then I really wanted to make um, some necklaces to go with the set in case somebody wanted to make a necklace to wear with them. The Magatama beads. These are the long Magatama beads and they have a lot of character to them and I think that's why everybody enjoys making things with them so much. So I hope you enjoy making this necklace. This is a first time beginner project. It does take a while to make it but there is uh, nothing easier to make than a shaggy loop chain. So this is a very simple project that anyone out there can learn to do and I hope you have a great time learning to make this. And make sure that you check out our stretchy Megatama bracelets as well. I think if you haven't seen those before, they're a lot of fun to make and they make fabulous gifts. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to start this project, the first thing that we wanna do is, you'll see that I have my jump rings here. And I've gone ahead and pre-opened them. Now, you don't always have to pre-open. I like to show it that way because I can move a little bit faster. But in this particular project, I think you're definitely going to want to pre-open them because um, we're going to do 129 of this first step. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is we are going to take each jump ring. Okay, and I'm going to pick this up with my right hand. And I'm going to pick my bead up with my left hand. Now, Magatama beads, their um, hole goes at an angle. So you want to go from the low hole up to the high side to go through these. Okay, and then we're just going to close. And we're going to do this, like I said, 100. And actually, um, for this first step, let's do it 127 times. We'll need 127 of these to make uh, the base portion of the necklace. And then the last two we're gonna add at the very, very end. And that's gonna hold everything in place on our chain. So you can hold those two back, but you might as well just go ahead and open those jump rings and have them ready for when we get to that part. But you see, this part's just very easy. We're just picking up our jump ring we pick up our bead. You want to go from the low hole to the high side of the bead and close. Okay, so we're going to do this a bunch of times, get everything all set to go, and then we will be ready for the next step. Okay, so for the next step in this process, we're going to start making our uh, bead cascades, which are little shaggy loop chains. And uh, the, the only difference between a traditional shaggy loop is our bottom jump ring is just going to have one of the beads on it. And then on each row after that, it'll have two beads. So it'll have a bead on either side. Okay, so I'm showing you a row of five. We're going to actually start with a row of 14. So you'll lay out 14 of the 18 gauge 3 16 jump rings. And you'll put a single down here. And for the other 13, it'll have a bead on either side. Okay, so I'll just show you how to make one of these cascades. Okay, so I'm going to pick up this jump ring. I'm just going to pick up one of my mounted beads. So I already pre-mounted these onto jump rings. And I pre-mounted them on 20 gauge 532nd jump rings. They're real skinny, which means it's going to, they're going to all fit through all of these uh, Magatama beads that were working with. These are the long Magatama. Okay, so now I'm picking up another jump ring. Now what I like to do, and you can do this differently, you can pick up a bead, pass through, and then pick up another bead. But what I like to do at this point is I like to just pass through the previous jump ring. I'll pick up both of these bead connections 
or these bead drops, I should say. Okay, I'll close that jump ring and then I'm gonna flip one back over to the right hand side. Okay, and then I'm gonna pick up my next jump ring. And this is the reason I do this, so I don't have to lay down the work in between. So I'm gonna pick up this jump ring. I'm gonna pick up two jump rings that are on beads, that have beads on them. And I'm gonna close that jump ring. And then I'm gonna flip the second bead over to the other side, okay? Do that two more times for this one. Again, this is our row of five. We know it's a row of five because that's how many 18 gauge 3 16 jump rings are going in the center of the row. Okay, close. And we're gonna flip that over to the other side. Don't forget to flip it to the other side if you do it this way because you don't want two beads on one side. Okay, and this is number five. So I'm gonna pick up the last two and close. Okay, so our first row was a row of 14. The next row was a row of 11. Next row will be rows of eight. And then the next row, which we're working on here is rows of five. And then I'm gonna do twos. And then finally, at the very, very end, when we start mounting it onto our chain, we'll do a single that we're gonna pass through the chain. So just to kind of show you what these look like, the row of 14, we're only gonna have one, okay? Cause this is our center row. And then after that, when, when we go down to 11, we actually wanna have two of these. Okay. And then we're gonna go to our eight. So you can see I'm, I'm each row is three, three jump rings less than the previous row. Okay, eight. And then I think you get the gist here. And then we're gonna have our fives on either side and then two on the outside. And once we have the twos done, then we'll be ready to actually build up our necklace. Okay, so now you can see that I have all of the shaggy loop parts done. You can see these are, this is my 14, 11, eight, five and twos, okay? So those are all ready. And then I have gone ahead and pre-closed 70 jump rings. And that's because I'm gonna need um, 10 segments for these uh, jump rings to sit on. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine and 10 will be out on this outside part, okay? So we're gonna start by taking our chain, the Supreme Made chain. I've been using this chain for forever and um, it's a real non-tarnishing kind of chain. So when I find something good like that, I tend to keep using it for years and years because I know it's reliable for everyone. Okay, so that's, I'm just sliding this chain through the jump rings. I don't know, there's probably an easier way to do this but this is how I do it. Um, you know, what you could do is actually put a little piece of uh, wire, twist a little piece of wire on the end here and um, use it like a needle. And that would probably make this faster, but I was lazy and I didn't get any wire out and this way it works just fine. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we're gonna have seven of these closed jump rings in each segment that we add on. Okay, so you see I just picked up seven of these. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is pick up one of the twos. So I wanna make sure that as I add this on, that see how these two uh, beads on the top jump ring are sitting on either side. And if I just pick this up with my pliers, then I can feed that right on, okay? and let that all run together. Okay, just making sure you can see that. And then we want seven more. So let's see, this, this, this might be the winning way. 
Okay, so that was one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so just, that's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I think the other end of this chain that has the lobster claw on it, I think it would prevent it from falling off, but this one's easy enough to get through the jump rings. Okay, so you see we just added seven more jump rings to this and then we have our little piece here so now we're going to do um our next segment which is five okay so i'm just going to hold that up okay and i just keep picking up my chain letting it you know i want it all to sit in the middle so um you see that we did our two are five. I'm going to add seven more jump rings. I'm going to add the eight, seven more jump rings, add the 11, seven more jump rings, add the 14, and then start going down to 11, eight, five, and two. Okay. So I'm going to finish doing this and go all the way across. And then I will be back to show you how to finish this up. Okay. So here is what our final necklace looks like. Once we've gotten everything strung on, isn't this just gorgeous? I just think it's such a statement piece and these colors are really lovely and uh, subtle, but at the same time striking, just lovely. So I just want to show you how to finish this up. So what I basically do is I pick this whole thing up by the chain and I make sure that everything is centered. And I do that by matching up the two ends together and making sure that everything's even. And then what I do is I'm gonna take those last two um, jump rings with Megatama beads, okay? And I would just put my Megatama bead on and then I take the end of this chain and hold it up so I get real close to that final jump ring. And then basically I'm going to pass this through two of the links of the chain, okay? And this is basically gonna block all of the other parts from moving past this, okay? And it'll keep it in place. So this is our single that's gonna be on the end, on either end, and I already put the other side on. So you can see that this chain is now complete and ready to wear. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you had a great time learning this project and I hope to see you next time.